Okay, so how do I get back to the other page? <laughs> back to the other page. It looks like I'm in now. Yes. Hey, I'm here. I just wanted to let you know I'm here, but I just haven't. I'm muted. Got you. Thanks, Juan. <laughs> all right. I think you're all cut, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, I see everybody. Thank you. Okay, cool. You're welcome. Now, can you have to share your screen? No, I don't know how to share my screen. Please help with that. Okay. Yeah. So Get it, getting it together, everyone. Give me a minute. <laughs> It should be at the bottom, okay. Now it should show share screen. Like as an option, you should have options at the bottom. Somehow, you see all the different options when you hover over the bottom. Share screen. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then it'll ask you which screen you want to share. Okay, got it. You should have the PowerPoint up, uh, so it'll it once you hit there you go. Got it. So okay. There you go. Yep, all you're right. in. Thank you much. All right, bye. All right. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me pretty good? Hello? Yes. Okay, everybody can hear me. So uh, Jennifer, Juan, and Lynette, is that who we have today? Has anyone else joined? That's who I can see so far. Yeah, Devin Green. Hey, Devin Green, okay, well, let me get going and not click on too many things before I miss some stuff. So uh, how's everyone doing? Everybody staying safe? Yes, everything's good. Okay, good. Good to hear. <laughs> okay, so uh, today's class, we were just going to jump right into it. It's price to sell. Can everyone see my screen to follow along with? Yeah, yes, we got I you. I got you. Okay, all right. So just let me get it together here. Let's see. All right, so um Today's class is price to sell. Um, we're going to talk about pricing principles and strategies. All right. So, mm -hmm. so you guys can see my screen and follow it along. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I can see you too. All right. So. Um, Let's see. So it's very important to grasp the following six critical strategies that set the stage for using pricing criteria effectively. These strategies are standards you need to bear in mind as you approach pricing any property. With practice, you'll absorb and internalize them. They will become part of, of you as a real estate agent and make you an outstanding advisor to both buyers and sellers. So I'm not going to read everything, and we're going to go back and forth. We're going to keep this real simple. Um, you know, due to the different circumstances in the market now, um, I had a listing that fell out of escrow because of the corona. So I guess we have to, you know, the market has shifted as Nicole is telling us and as, as we know. So um, do you guys have any, um, you guys want to talk about any differences that, that you've encountered with the market shift? Has, have you lost any escrows or uh, sales or buyers? Juan, how about you? I, I heard you talking on our, our call yesterday. Has, how has it changed for you as far as some of your deals? Business as usual. Now, uh -huh. one, 
one of my flip deals did what your flip deal did, which means it, um, one of my flip deals, we, we were in escrow at 471. Then we you know we got accepted. His, the, the buyer's dad had a stroke. So the next day he dropped out. So our backup was 67500. We accepted them. And then because of what happened and the, and the market shifted, he said no. And then we had two, two, two 465s. They said no. We just reopened everything. Now we have three offers. The best offer we got now is 425. Wow. So, and I mean, the seller's going to get back in escrow, but those are the numbers. And everybody's also beginning to start bargain shopping. That's in the investor arena. So, that's pretty much this market that we are now is, is, is bargain shopping is what you're saying that that's investment. And I think that's across the board. Yeah. But I don't think that we're, I don't think we're going to see that part of it in my opinion. And I say that because it depends on the market that you're in. See, to me, if your client is like 300, 400, then that implies that that client is pretty much an hourly wage because the household for that is going to be around sixty to 70000 to afford that. So that type of demographic become hourly workers, daily workers. Those are going to be hit really hard with the layoffs and the financial aspect. Now, let's take a buyer that buys at six fifty seven hundred, which is now anything west or western, I mean west of normal. Okay, that buyer now is going to need about 140, 150 to qualify. That means you're going to pretty much you still need to have a professional, two professionals. So if for them, they may just be a pause in money. It's going to start when everything you see. So that that market, I don't really see that market slowing down and anything above it. I just I, it, unless you were directly affected where you lost your job. It's just going to be business as usual. Also, suppose some of the people that lost a job who had the higher offer, now they offer gone, but somebody else that's ready to buy it now say, oh, I can buy it now. Boom. And, and you see in those deals hit. The, 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 you know, whoever was prime fell out, but your number two and three for retail deals are getting an escrow. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, um, my concern is a lot is with the lenders as well. I, I think the shift is going to affect them and, and how they loan. And, <clears throat> and it's going to affect our bottom line because if they're not loaning the money, you know, how are, you know, how are our buyers going to get, get the loan to, to get the property. And that uh, ties into know what sales. Um, number one right here, if you guys can see my screen, it says know what sales. There's little point in winning a listing if it does not sell. To get a sold, to get a home sold for the most money in the least amount of time, it must be priced in the market. So then it says there are two uh, determining factors: price and condition. So I think our market now, you know, if we try to price some in the market, I'm trying to figure out what is the market now because I don't think, you know with all the layoffs and stuff, I think the market has drastically changed and a, a listing is, is going to be more difficult to sell. Why and do you say that? Because people are getting laid off. You know, I think lenders are going to be um, more scared to loan money with, in an uncertain market. Well, they're not really loaning money based on them. They're loaning money based on the house. Now, what's going to freeze is, is that in every loan process, just before the lender funds, they do an employment verification and an income verification. So that, people ain't going to have no check to give them, but they, say they didn't get laid off. They just got furloughed. So that means that that deal can potentially just be pushed on hold. Okay. It's the ones that lose their job that are not going to be able to do this, but most lenders are willing to wait. The problem is in waiting, they're not going to lock your loan. 
You see my point? So your rate might dip a little bit, but at the end of the day, they're just going to allow you to move in. It's those, once again, it's the hourly worker that's subject to lose their job. And those price points are generally below 450 for that demographic, so to speak. You're going to have your outliers, but based on a call that I was on yesterday with um, Paul Morris and some others, a lot of people, especially in the, in the units, it's business as usual. It's just the ones that were already buying that were marginally, that probably, you know, were stretching the edge of the envelope. Those might back up. Some of the areas that you see, like two weeks ago, you might be able to get 480. Now your number might be 460, 465. It doesn't mean they're going to stop buying them. I don't, I don't, to me, I don't see it looking like 2008. That's all I'm You know, I think we're heading that way because I have a uh, client who works at the airport and they're with uncertainty. She's just not certain of, you know, if they're going to lay her off or, you know, cut hours or whatever. And I don't think lenders are going to be too, you know, I, I think it's just going to be a lot of issues in the market and it's going to really reflect how you price the sale and just selling properties in general, especially in the market that you're in, because a lot of those lenders are backing out, I'm hearing. The easy money backing out. Yeah, the easy um, money. But yeah. They, again, I still got buyers that are willing to come with cash. They just feel because it's like it is that they can offer less. You see my point? Now, my problem is I have one that's going to be a listing that's being rehabbed on 78th and Deacon. Okay, we originally underwrote it to, to get 17 when we finished. Now we don't know if we can get 17 if it's 790, if it's 690 now, or 680, and does he need to, to, to lease it for a minute? Those are the type of things that are happening. I don't see the bottom falling out the market. I just see that based on the financial aspects, it's creating deals for the second and third quarter. I mean, for the third and fourth quarter. There are going to be some people who, who are going to get caught short. They're going to, they're going to end up losing their house or their job. It's going to be unfortunate. We're going to see short sales. We're going to see people who last month you call them, no, nah, I'm going to hold on to it for a little while. I'm going to check the equity. They will dump that house tomorrow now. It just You're going to start seeing that. But I but the 2006 where the values bottom out the market, mm -mm. Mm -mm. I ain't talked to nobody. I ain't talked to no, and I've been listening to a whole bunch of people that don't look like me, and I ain't found, I ain't heard nobody say that. They just said it's gonna be painful for a minute, and the back end of the year gonna be nice. So I'm. Well, well, let's hope that's correct. Yeah, uh, let's hope that's correct. <laughs> so you know, just speaking on the local market conditions. Um. We're looking at the inventory, how much is out there for sale. Is the inventory, is the price, are the prices rising or falling? We're looking at days on market, you know, price per square foot, of course. Changes in the local landscape. So I think all that's affecting us now. The inventory, the days on market, and the changes in the local landscape um, due to the corona. And, it, it, you know, from how they say, if, it, if it's going to get a lot worse, um, I just, I'm just worried about the, the, the market as it is now, as, you know, as we move forward. Um, so how do you think the inventory is out there now? I, I've been paying attention and it's, it's kind of the same, but. I don't think as many people, if they were, I have a client that was thinking about putting it on the market and now they're holding off. But I don't know, um, you know, they say they're going to hold off until this is over, but no one knows when this is going to be over. So that's one of my issues. Juan? Well, Hello. for me. Hey, hey quick, listen, let me say this real quick. Um, the property on Wilton 
and, and the reason why I'm, I'm speaking on this is because that one, they changed their mind due to, to the corona. They took it off the market, just to let you know. <laughs> Meaning they took it off, the, the, the buyer took it off, the seller put, took it off the market? The seller took it off the market because they didn't want to try to find another place to live with everything going on. That's what they said. But, but here, here's my thinking. And everybody, see, some people are taking the panic mode. Other people are not. Because I, because I'll see for me, I was one of the people that started losing their stuff in 2007. I was in the first wave. So I was able to watch a whole lot of stuff unfold in front of me as we got to it. And then I came back in the game in 2010. So I've seen a lot of different views and, 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 and a different space as it pertains to a market that, that kind of blows up like this. And again, I mean, if, if on my deal, if they came back and said, I'm not giving you no more than $300,000, then okay, maybe. But that's not what they're doing. I've talked to too many lenders. The lenders are not, with the lenders right now, their issue is not, is not the ability to, 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 to loan money. The problem that they're having is an internal problem. So what it looks like for them is for every dollar they loan, the banks have to put so much money in reserve. So once the, so, so once the, 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 the interest rates dropped down, it started a slew of people wanting refinances. So they, so they took up the capacity. So what a lender does now is when they lock your loan, now that these rates are going down below the lock, it creates for the lender a cash call or a margin call. So now they got to come up with cash to cover those, those locks that they didn't put in play. So for them, it's affecting their capacity. They, they they fixing that now with the stimulus package and the fact that the, the government is buying bonds again and the, the 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 rate between banks is almost zero so they they didn't fix that they just trying to figure out how do they deal with people that don't have no job and how you going to do a loan that's all that you're dealing with because the economy is stopped but once it start again everybody going to have jobs at least the ones that's that who whose company didn't go under. But at the end of the day, I don't see it blowing up where everybody gonna lose their job. I just think it's a situation where everything is stopped. And you got too many injuries in industries that stop, like airports. They, you know, people they hire, you know, you got transportation, you also got the the uh uh airline I mean, the lines industry and everybody to go with that. But the moment they start, people gonna fly again, people gonna take on cruise ships. Ain't nobody driving Lyft or Uber right now. Ain't nobody on the freeway. So all of those different jobs that 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 got stopped gonna start over. So when they start, that's when everybody gonna kick back in. Don't nobody know when the start date is. It was supposed to be last week. Now, now, um, then the president said, okay, we are gonna make it Easter. Now he said, okay, we are gonna keep it in play to the end of April. Now at the end of April, they gonna reassess it, but. At the end of the day, they cannot keep this country turned off like it is for too much longer before it do look like 2006. And ain't nobody going to let that happen. They'll let 150,000 people die tomorrow before they let that happen. It's sad, but I think that's how they look at it. So that's my take. I got you. Would anyone else like to chime in on Juan and our conversation? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll go to pricing criteria. Um, the following factors come into play when looking for comparable properties. Location, size, amenities, and condition. Does anyone have a listing right now that they have or a buyer that's been pre-approved within the last, let's say, week? Lynette, are you talking? Did you say something? Uh, y your speaker is not on. Turn your speaker on, Lynette. Oh, there you go. All right. yeah. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. They pre-approved a few weeks ago, but now they want to wait because of what's going on. They think the market is getting ready to drop because everybody's saying the market is 
going to drop. So now they want to wait another three to six months to see what happens with the market. Yep. And, and, and that's what I'm hearing for the most part. So, you know, this class is priced to sell. So we have to figure out when we do get a listing, how do we price it? Right. And then I have a husband and wife that want to buy something, but they're in their 70s. But now they don't want to go out and start looking because of the situation with the coronavirus. Yeah, so they it, want to wait for this to pass before we go out and start looking at property. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely affecting the bottom dollar because it it affected mine personally by right. me in that listing. So and um, Jennifer, she just closed the deal like right in time. When did your deal close, Jennifer? Was it last month or? It closed in February. Oh, it closed in February, but you know. In a good enough time before yes, you made it, yeah, good. Congratulations. Yeah. So, um, but I, I, I just would like to see someone who um, I, I want to see if, if are the lenders lending money right now. Right. That's the question. I want to see if somebody, you know. Yes. Gets the, oh, okay. So you've seen a um, or yeah, you I have talk, a client. I've talked to lenders. Their lenders are still doing business. I, I hear they're doing business, but I want to see it. I want to like I want someone that has a a buyer, you know, you know, or a seller. I want to see a property close escrow right now under these circumstances. I think the the more we get into this, the more problems we're going to have. Interesting. Didn't they say appraisals are being impacted as far as um they're just doing drive by only right now? Are, are there full appraisals being done? Exactly. I hear their appraisers are not going into the property. So Hi, excuse me. This is Anita. Um, I went uh, this past Sunday to let the uh, the appraiser person come through. They were going to do a drive by at first, but they ended up going inside. So I just stood outside while they were doing their business, and then when they left, you know, I just locked up and they were gone. I was gone, so I stayed out of their way. Uh, the house that I have in escrow should close uh, around April 17th. Okay. Well, that's, and, and they were pre-approved. Yes. Before, yeah. before all of this. Before all of this. So a matter of fact, I gave the last open house because the last, the, the open house I gave for that particular house was um, March 7th and 8th. And then it seemed like the week right after that, everything shut down. Got it. I got to get out of here. I got to go. I got to go view a house right now. So at two o'clock. So I'll let you know how it goes. Now, here's the interesting thing, though. The seller wants everybody to have masks and gloves to go into the house. You're going to see stuff like that. You know, I don't have no mask. So I'm going to take a scarf. But at the end of the day, that's the kind of stuff you're going to see. But I'm telling you, I mean, based on all that I'm reading, hearing, and I'm doing a whole bunch of research on this because I advise people. See, what makes it hard for me is when my clients buy a house, I'm the one that tell them what it's worth. So they, so that number is what they use to underwrite the house. And that's the number that I think I can sell it for. So, I mean, it's getting touchy on the back end. I wouldn't, re if I have a new property, I wouldn't try to hit the market. I would try to, whatever I think the top of the market is, I drop it just below that. I wouldn't try to go for top of the market right now, but I'm not going to, I put it on the market. I sure would. Because Probably the longer, like what? Like the higher your probability is, the job. Well, you, you know that the sellers still go want top of the market for their property, regardless of what's going on. So Yeah, but here's what's happening right now. You got property staying on the market longer. It's about to be a buyer's market now. So now sellers are going to have to compete with another house that looks just as good as theirs down the street for 10000 less. That's what they're going to have to look at. And you can put it on the market. Or you can say, well, I'm going to take it off the market. Fine. The longer it stay off the market, the less it's going to be you're going to make on the back end. Makes sense. That's my thoughts. Now, y'all chew on that and only, you know, <laughs> let's, review, let's re re revisit this like in November, see what happens. I, I hope it, you know, the market <laughs> improves. Y'all have a go. And, and be oh. safe out there, y'all.
All right. So um, now we're at um, page 16, number four, price to reflect market movement, which is pretty much what, what we're discussing. Um, at this point, you have to price to reflect which way the market is moving. We really don't know. It, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we really don't know, but it, it don't look like it's moving up. Right. So, you know, market direction, w whether the market is appreciating or depreciating, um, you know, I, I don't see a lot of movement at all. And what, what I'm going to do after, after this meeting is just research the closings and see what's closing, closing right now. Right. And with, you know, cause I, I don't think many escrows are being open now, but, but we'll see. And then it says uh, market speed of change. How quick, how quickly prices, prices are changing and what the rate of change is. So, you know, we're not sure of that either. Right. And then it says, don't chase the market price of head, price ahead of it. You know, I think, you know, during this time, we're just in, in a wait and see mode. We wait and see what happens. Yeah, but we got to make some money. We got we to gotta make some money. Good point. So we got to come up with a plan and just get the buyers and sellers and the lender together. Right. What are you hearing about people's jobs? I'm hearing that layoffs, furloughs, uh, like layoff in the future. Are you hearing people keeping their jobs pretty much or the same thing I'm hearing that people are getting laid off. Laid off and not sure if they want to make a move right now. They want to wait maybe three to six months and see what happens. Yeah. Because yep. they don't want to buy a house and then they lose their job and then now they can't keep up the mortgage payment. So th that's where I think we are now. Pay 17 in a declining market. Right. So now we got to figure out what to do in a declining market. So um, I think it's good for investors that's coming in with cash. But you know, as Juan was saying, even the investment market, market, the easy money, the lenders are being more cautious. With cash. With cash, yes. That, that's that's what Juan said, and that's what I know as well. He said okay. the cash isn't as easy to get as it was. The, he said the easy cash. So um, here's a little chart in the declining market. When prices are falling, sellers make a huge mistake by pricing too high, hoping to attract the offer they want or thinking they will drop the price later if the strategy doesn't work. So, you know, I, I'm going to really start pounding the pavement and see what's out here in this market and just adjust. I, and that's the only thing we can do is adjust. To what's going on then it says don't be afraid to be professionally honest pricing right is hard work but it's worth it because it gets your sellers to their goals and make you money for your business professional honesty is your best approach it means understanding where the customers are coming from and being professional enough to stand up for them and tell them the truth about topics such as market condition, property condition, features, amenities, location, buyer and buyer agent feedback, and comparable property sales. So if I were to go out and get a listing and I do it based on the comparables and then the appraiser come out and, and knocks it down 20,000, but my comparable show is worth more than that, then I still have a situation. You have a situation, and it sounds like you'll have a 
a difficult client or just a client that's not happy with that appraisal because it, you know, if it comes back, but I think if, if the comps, whatever the comps say, the market conditions, the appraisal will roll it too, usually, especially if you could provide proof to the appraiser. Right. So, but I guess we'll have to see. It's, it's kind of early in, in everything that's going on. I don't think prices are, are dropped, have dropped yet from what I see, but you know, we'll see. Excuse me, let me grab some water. Okay. So does anyone have any questions so far or would like to, to chime in and, and say anything? The only thing we can do is just keep um, prospecting and see what happens and go from there and cross our fingers. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know. I, I agree. Because with uncertainty, you know, we just don't know. But if the seller would ask us, um, what do we think, you know, about the market dropping? I mean, then what do you tell them? I mean, as of this day, I can tell you it's at this price. Exactly. As of this day, yeah. these are the comps. This is what right. the property last sold for. But now we're saying this is what the property sold for before Corona. Right. Or, or the last property that sold. So now we're in. Need to look at the closings for uh, April. Wait, we get to the end of April and look at the closings and see. Check yep. April and May closings and go from there. Yep. I'm thinking that'll give us a little guideline. I agree. I agree. April and May. And that'll tell us what type of summer we're going to have. Right. And then that'll. What we do now, um, as Nicole was saying yesterday um, on our shift meeting, is we're preparing now for the, for the, uh, November, December. What we do now will. Wow. We'll, That's a long way off. Yep. But, and, 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 you know, me being in the tax business, yeah. I know, you know, whatever we do now, we just prepare work and, and go out and, and grind and get business it'll just you know keep us going to the to the end of the year but what it, but if we don't do it now then towards uh october november you know the money will be low yeah and i i do that every year you know so so now we're on the uh, the cma Comparative market analyst. So, um, you know, you search, select, and decide. How do you guys usually do your 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 compare your CMA? Do you search properties in the MLS uh, websites? Both. How do, you, how do you do it? Both. Both, yeah, yeah, that's the same way I do it. So and that's what I sold, a few pending, available. Yep, that search the sold, the pendings, available. Sometimes you drive the neighborhood and see if anything is, is off market. I've done that before and I saw, um, I got a, I got a, one of my clients found in my house that wasn't on the market and he got that. So it's, it's several ways to do comparative. Was market. it an expired? You picked up an expired listing? She was actually just putting it on. Okay. Yep. And, and I, uh, we came in and gave 11,000 over asking. Wow. And um, property as is. And he Did got it appraised? It. it appraised. Wow. Okay. Yep. And, um, and the, the, the selling, and we closed. I said we we're going to close in 17 days, and it closed in 21 days. Wow. Pre Corona, before Corona, of course. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay. So, yeah, so. 
So like you just spoke about pricing recommendations, uh -huh. um, present your price recommendation by showing the sellers the following pages from your listing presentation that illustrate your conclusion. So the list of recent listings and sales, um, property details of your selection, and then a conclusion. So you just pull up all the sold and pending and active from the immediate neighborhood covering a recent time period, usually 30 days. And then you show the property de details, um, like if their property is 2,000 square feet, you want to show a property that's very similar to theirs, 2,000 square feet, three bedroom, um, same lot size. You want to do it as close as possible because as we know, when we go see, um, when we go to do a, a, a seller's presentation, they always talk about the property that sold down the street for 100,000 more than theirs, but it has uh, 600 more square feet. Right. So we, we just have to make sure that we're all, you know, talking about the same thing and we're all on the same page when we do a, a listing presentation. Any questions regarding the, the pricing recommendation or listing presentation? No. Anyone can chime in at any time. Let's see. So, and then it gives a couple of tips. Um, let's see what page we're on. We're on page 21, price recommendations. Then it has tip one and tip two. I'll just go over tip one and tip two with you. When sellers want to go above your recommended price, be sure they know that any offer they accept must meet the test of the buyer's professional appraisal. A price that won't appraise will require additional money from the buyer. So if a property appraises at 450 and the buyer um, and the buyer is at no if it appraises higher then the buyer will have to come with the additional amount if the buyer is willing to usually the buyers aren't willing to I haven't seen that happen much yeah. or the seller has to sell at the appraised value yes but sometimes the sellers think that they can wait and get more money right which probably would happen a lot in this market. So, and then tip two, price per square foot can be a valuable tool, but only when comparables are very close together in terms of features, age, condition, and location. Properties in a newer subdivision would be a good example. So properties in a subdivision would be a good example because most of them are the, are the same. I live in a subdivision, um, but they have three different builders. So they're kind of different, but okay. yeah, kind of the same as well. So this is a, a guide to selling your home on page 22. It's the recommended price from your, from your, for your home. It's what you would give to the seller. And it just says, my, rec my recommendation is based on the following. A detailed custom market analyst, the unique characteristics of your home and its setting, my expertise in the real estate market. So usually when you have some, something like this and you give it to a, um, a client, a seller, they have a better understanding because it's it's right in their face. So I would suggest just come very prepared and just have all your ducks lined up in a row to, to give the seller a better understanding. Jennifer, do you use this? Because you're usually very prepared when you go to a, a sales a sales meeting, a potential for a potential seller. 
use some of those materials. It just depends on the on the cust I mean on the client. I try to customize um, what I do present, but typically the standard materials are pretty helpful to paint the picture. I get it. And the um, the listing that that you didn't get in uh, Blair Hills because yes. because the um, the other agent decided to, he went over and above, not that you don't, but sometimes you gotta go over and above and said he would paint and carpet? Yeah, he replaced the carpet. He painted the inside of the house um, and paid to have it cleaned as well. And that was all rolled into his compensation from what the client said. I don't know if, you know, he could he maybe have billed her separately for that Oh, and then he packed up some of her stuff and shipped it to her because she had moved out of state as well. So that's what she said. The agent so. did all that? <laughs> the agent. The, oh, wow. That's to, to get the listing. <laughs> wow. But, but he could have rolled it back into the price, of course. That's what, you know. Well, if I, if I would have charged um, at 6%, then, you know, there would have been enough room maybe to do it because... Right. At the time, I think she was negotiating. I think I was at like four and a half, like that. So oh. he might have done it. Maybe he charged her six, and then you know offered to roll that in there. I don't know how how it was structured, but um, he did pay for all those um, upgrades apparently. So, so, so yeah. that was that was added to his market analyst and his whole presentation, and in in that particular situation, he got the the sale possibly because of that could have been other factors but and, and it was really just cosmetic stuff i don't know if you remember but i mean it, it sold pretty quickly so i mean it it definitely turned out i'm sure probably in his benefit to offer that because clearly he got the listing and it sold within 30 days so wow now let me get this straight so the uh the agent agreed to paint pay for the painting Paint the, paint, the, paint the interior of the house right. and then also replace the carpet in the entire house. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. But even if he um, increased the commission, that's still the seller is paying it. Well, it's exactly. Nice. So that's why I think, you know, it's just how you present it, right? So clearly right. this wasn't his first time doing this because I'm sure he probably had a vendor, right? And I'm sure it wasn't any really expensive carpet. Um, I didn't actually go see it after he did it, but, um, you know, a couple of rooms of carpet and a couple of walls right. of paint just came in white. And um, it was actually another Keller Williams agent. I can't remember which office. I want to say it was from, hmm, I don't know if it was, it was, I think it was like Westlake Village or something. He wasn't even like local, right. like from right. out okay. far. So, right. uh, but he was able to roll it in and, that convinced the client and that was the the, the decision maker. I agreed to do cer certain things like, but right. I, uh, at the time, I didn't think to offer to replace the carpet. I didn't have any pricing on that to be able to feel confident that right. I could do that in the deal, right? So, but um, yeah, he was able to make it work. Wow. And usually that's done on more higher end listings, of course. And was this a 1.1, 1.2, Jennifer? Yeah, I think it was, I think it went to market at 1.2 and I think it sold for, yeah, like a little bit over 1.2. He pretty much got what he listed it for. Okay. Got it. So, and I think like stuff like that, um, I've paid to help clients move different things like that. And uh, I went half on one of my listings, uh, I went half on the staging that uh, Jennifer does staging. So she came in and staged it for me and me and the, uh, my client, the seller went half. So those are also some tricks of the trade to help get the listing. When you go for the, the listing appointment, you know, that's what I would suggest to help. You said staging? Huh? You said staging? Staging. Yes. If, if the property calls for staging and it's, you know, if it's empty, usually, if it's not all cluttery, okay. I would stage it and offer to pay for half I, or, oh. or, to, or to reimburse at the close of escrow. Okay. 
half of the staging. Okay. And and Jennifer does staging, just to let you guys know. Oh, that's good. So um, so it says um, now we're on page twenty three. It says make your own comparable market market analysts. So just says evaluate your choosing property against comparables based on four major determining factors for price, location, size, amenities, and conditions. So um, I think this is, they want you guys to, to really do it. So we're going to bypass this for now. Take 30 minutes. That was an activity. We'll keep going. Is, does anybody on here completed their 10 4? All right. Yeah, it's uh, Ke Keller Williams 10 4. I think you call 10 people per day. Or you add 10 people to command. That's, that's what they want us to do for the action plan. So I'm going to start doing that. Um, you know, I, I think we all should be. Uh, still proactive when everything is going on and call clients because they're at home. You know, I was thinking, should I call clients or, or not because of what's going on? But most of them are at home. It, it's, it's, they're not as busy as they once was. So maybe we can just set up appointments for future times and, um, you know, and add people to our database. Right. It's like I have a few clients, but they're on it's on hold. So what do you do? He call them maybe maybe once a month. <laughs> yeah, or, or get a uh, email drip campaign going because oh, that's smart. yeah, that's smart. And, and here's a topic that's very helpful. You know, I I also have a tax office, but every anyone could use it. When I sent out an email, you know, usually I send out emails. I get some response sometimes, you know, more than others. But when I sent out an email, when I, I just went online and read about the stimulus package that the government has given. Right. If you talk about a topic like that, you have everybody's attention. So right. you, you can start off that in the header and then throw in something about real estate, you know, if, if you if you send an email out to your database and you just keeping them informed about what's going on with the, you know, with the stimulus, because, you know, everybody's getting a check and everybody wants to know about that. So I just thought that was a good idea to, uh, so, so that people may read your email. That's smart. Yeah. So, um, let's see here. Does anyone have any questions or would like to say anything about the market or um, what are you guys doing to to continue business? I think I like the email idea. I think I like that. Reach out the to email. me by email. Yep. Uh, send out an email to your database. Right. I'm, just, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to focus on command and just building my business online so that when this does clear up, I'll be ahead of the game instead of behind it, trying to play catch up. I, I'm also hearing that, um, you know, usually this is real estate season, the next couple months where a lot of people go to get their license. Right. That's not happening now. Um, so there won't be a lot of new agents coming in as it usually is. And some people are even not renewing their license. So the, the market will be a little, you know, it'll be a few less agents in the market whenever this clears okay. up from what I'm hearing. Let's see here.
So we can just, just go over what, what we spoke about. Um, what are the four factors that drive price? Size, location, condition, and amenities. Um, why is it important to properly price a home to sell? A well-priced home creates interest, attracts buyers, generates showings, and produces offers very quickly. And I agree. I have a home coming up in Pomona that I was going to list. We're still going to list. It's scheduled to list in May. So hopefully I still, you know, we still go ahead with it. My client is a judge. Oh, wow. And the house is on a corner and it's, it's, um, it has a lot of history. Like the architect is a famous, a famous architect. It, so I'm going to research, I'm going to have to really research that home to put it on the market. So I'm, you know, aware of the surroundings and, and what the, what the home has to offer. So we'll see how that goes. And that property will sell itself as long as it's price right, of course. So on page 30, it says, what is important about the window of opportunity? The percentage of buyers who will look at a property increases and decreases in direct proportion the property's price compared to market value. Pricing above the market does not get you showings. Pricing at or just below the market does. So when pricing a property, I think that um, Jennifer and I just priced a property. And how do you think we did on it, Jennifer, as far as did we price a little above the market or right at the market? It was in Lamert Park, and, and we had the discussion back to back because Jennifer and I worked together a lot, just to let you guys know. Um, it was in Lamert Park, and it was one point. What did what did what did it get priced at? We was at a million fifty. A million fifty, and that was. Um, and then it it actually sold at nine. Nine, nine, I think it was nine eighty five. Nine, yeah, nine eighty five. But and it and it because it, it appraised at nine eighty five. So this is nine seventy five. It appraised at nine seventy five. So the buyers did go up twenty thousand. It went up ten thousand. They went it's up ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So that was a situation um, similar to what we spoke on earlier, where wow. the the appraisal came in lower but the property ended up selling for 10,000 more and the buyers had to come out of the pot. Oh, wow. Okay. The buyer was willing to do that to get the property. Yeah. And, and that was a unique two story property in Lamert Park. And was that one of the highest sold properties in that area, Jennifer? Yeah, it actually was, especially for it being not updated on the, um, like in the kitchen. Um, that was one of the things that made the appraisal come back a little bit low, but it was a rare four bedroom, four bathroom, like four and a, three and a half bathrooms with the, oh, wow. uh, with the permitted um, addition that was done back in the, I think it was done in the fifties, I think the, the addition was done and it was a pretty big lot. I think it was over 7,500 square feet, the lot. It was on the edge hill in 39th. With the winding staircase. Yeah, it was very nice. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, so um, and but we, act we actually got offers. We had, it was, um, we actually had a million sixty was the highest offer that we had. We were in escrow at a million sixty. And what happened with that? The million sixty? Oh, it, the appraisal. Yeah. The appraisal. Yeah. yeah. Came back real low. Yeah. Yeah. How long ago was that? It was listed in October and. Okay. Uh, it sold, it, escrow finally closed in February. So it was um, a little while, but it was during the holiday times, you know, wow. Thanksgiving, and it's, you know, so it was a little bit of a longer transaction time. 
Jennifer also has some other information um, that's, that'll be helpful. She sold the highest listing in Near Simply Wholesome. Let's talk about that, Jennifer. Um, where was that at? I don't mean to put you on, on the spot, but, but this is valuable information. On, on Citrus, right behind Simply Wholesome on Citrus. Are you guys familiar and, with Simply Wholesome? Okay, yeah. Awesome. That's great. T -t Tell them the price, Jennifer, and a little bit about that, because that was very interesting, and I think it's good for people to hear that. So that one, it was sold in, um, let's see, it's been a year now. So it was sold last, it was last February, that one closed escrow. And it was, it was on the market for 1.7 initially. And it was a really unique property. It actually, it's right on the corner. It looks like a castle, but you can't see it. It's behind a huge hedge. It's a very unique property. And uh, my clients who live in the, in the neighborhood already, um, they lived off of Marburn and Angeles Vista. We're looking for something bigger, looking for something unique. And I saw that property for them and instantly they like, they fell in love with it. It had been on the market for a while, had fallen out of escrow, I think maybe two or three times. And oh, wow. I, the sellers were really looking to sell. They were trying to, I think they were, I don't know if they were moving to China, but they were, they were moving. And um, they were international, uh, the couple that owned the property, they were always kind of in and out of the country and they just wanted it sold. And um, so I think we entered escrow at 1.6, I believe. So they had negotiated, we had negotiated some more. I think we entered escrow at 1.6. And then we had a situation where they had actually converted um, a garage into a um, an ADU, but they never got it permitted. So when the appraisal came back, their appraisal came back low. And we actually had two appraisals done because there was some, they felt like it was um, maybe not a fair appraisal the first time. So the second one actually came back even lower than the first one. So um, we ended up kind of doing an average of two appraisals together and the clients paid a little bit out of pocket, a little bit higher than what the appraisal came back. But the, the, they ended up buying the house for 1.5, 1, 1,512,000 is what the sale price actually was. Um, and it was initially, like I said, 1.7. So they got a really good deal. And it was the highest sold, the highest priced property in the area. Yes, Ooh. and still to this day, it, that is still the case. And we were um, not sure that it, it would appraise for that value, but it did. Yeah. And so, so I just thought that was interesting to share. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, no, no problem. Bring back flashbacks. That was an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, page uh, 30, it just says, why is a CMA important? Then it says, it is designed to help you walk the seller through the comparative process you went through to arrive at the recommended list price. So it's just helps the seller understand what a comparative market is. You walk them, walk them through it. And usually they get it when you just, um, because most sellers want more than what their property's worth as most of you know, I'm sure. So when you break it down to them, then they just have a better understanding. That's why I like the, the comparative market analyst because I think it's very helpful. Does anyone have any questions so far? No. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna finish this up and I'm not gonna hold you up um, too much longer, so bear with me. So I suggest um, during this time down, practice the scripts, uh, pricing strategies, practice the tools, you know, the ways to communicate, look at the seller pre-listing packet, look at the seller listing presentations, because I, I feel this is <clears throat> kind of downtime for us. Right. And, and it's, it's not so much 
for some reason, it's not so much hustle and bustle, I guess, because for those of you who have kids, the schools have, are closed. For those of you who are work, working at home, I think we, we should make the most of it. You know, because um, because the days are still going by, you know, whether we just lounge and, and eat snacks or or focus on building our business. I've been doing a little both, but. <laughs> okay. So, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So on page 33, these are just some of the scripts. So it's just, I would just go over those, you know, on your guys' free time. Right. Determining the list price. What's very important is page 34, pricing objections. So we will encounter a, a lot of sellers. They're going to have pricing objectives, objections. No matter what you say, they're going to say the house up the street did this or that. And sometimes you can't even find the house that they're talking about, but, but they're sure that the house sold for 50,000 more than what you're trying to list theirs for. So you just have to have all your, your um, documentation, have all your backup documentation to present to the seller. Um, so objection one, we need a certain amount from this sale to buy our next home. I hear that a lot. Right. Uh, objection number two, can we price a little higher and come down later? It just tells you just answers for those questions, which I think is very helpful. Option, uh, objection number three, how can we be sure the price you're recommending is the right price? So then it just has an answer for that, which these answers make sense and it just takes the guesswork out of it for you and it, it helps you, you know, just get through it a little faster, especially if you haven't been in the business long. Here's a, a Page 35 has a closing the deal script. This I've been in this business over uh, 15 years, and this helps me to this day, you know, because it's, it's constantly changing. So going over this now just helps me because I don't always have a chance to, to review it. So on that, it looks like we're at the bottom of this. So I, I'm not going to hold you guys up anymore. I would like to thank you all for participating in my, uh, in my class today. This is my first price to sell um, okay. <laughs> class. I, I hope you guys got some information out of it. And thank you for participating. All right. Thank you. And be safe, OK? Thank you. Great class. Thank you. All right. Do, do we have any parting questions or any comments or concerns? I'm good. No, but thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. All right. Yeah, you know.